Once upon a time, people were just minding their own business, when suddenly a huge empire appeared out of nowhere and scared the crap out of everyone. That's Claytonia. Hey guys, welcome back to Nations of Minecraft, where I talk about all the different countries in my Minecraft world one by one. So, the two empires that um, you mostly hear about in this world are Durlan and Ayapeda, who have been at war for a very long time now, but the third empire that doesn't get mentioned as much is the Empire of Claytonia, which might start another war in addition to the war that's already going on, but first they have to finish up a war of their own before they can start another war that's going to go along with the big war. Following me? Okay, I think to explain this better, let's go to the map. So, Claytonia is located right here in the east. Officially, it's called the New Deistan Empire in Clayton. Clayton is the capital city. But these two countries didn't like that name because they claim to be the successors of the ancient Deistan Empire, which used to rule all this land. So instead, they're calling this the Claytonian Empire. And almost everyone else agrees with them, so even Claytonia has just decided to go with it. So yeah, the reason I have this region separated is because this used to be a different country that just recently joined the Claytonian Empire. This region is called Regia. Regia has its own separate culture and language as it's descended from the ancient Storiz tribe, which is arguably the first tribe in the world. So yeah, the reason this is so controversial and the reason it's causing so much conflict is because Regia used to belong to an alliance called the Navakeshan Confederation. They used to be allied with these countries. And these countries in the Confederation were suspicious of Claytonia from the beginning. So they really didn't appreciate when Regia decided to join Claytonia instead. The reason they did this was because they felt like they were getting excluded. I explained that in a different video. You can watch that. But yeah, they are not happy that Claytonia stole their ally. And this also puts them, it puts the Confederation in danger because it's a lot easier for Claytonia to potentially invade them now that they have Regia. And Claytonia's even expressed some desire to start conquering some territory. So yeah, um, in response to this, uh, the Confederation has started putting armed cannons along their river border pointed at Claytonia. And in response, Claytonia's done the same. So, yeah, tensions are getting very, very heated. These countries are mad at each other, they're pointing cannons at each other, and everyone else is freaking out. Because nobody wants there to be a war here, since this river, the Deistan River, is a very important trading river for, like, everyone in the region. And the east, this whole area, this whole part of the world, is where most of the mineral, the mining resources come from. So you don't want a major trading river to be, like, um, a war zone. So yeah, everyone's worried about this. Nobody wants there to be a war. But these two sides are getting pretty mad at each other. So yeah, the regions of Claytonia can be broken down like this. There's Regia, which we talked about. I was there recently. It's kind of full of just dark, spooky forests. It, it, it's an interesting place, but it's not for everyone. And yeah, so another region is the River Coast region. And this region is, as we said before, heavily militarized because it's on the river. And yeah, so this is where a lot of Claytonians actually live. But this region, this is kind of just like everything else. Um, most of Claytonia's land, which is not on the Deistan River, is actually pretty dry and desolate and doesn't have that many people living there in, in this yellow region, except for the capital city, Clayton, which is buried inside a mountain. It's right here. It's like uh, in sort of like a donut-shaped hole in the mountain. It's really cool. But there still aren't that many people living in the capital city. So the last region is this region in the Far East, and this is also militarized. So uh, this has some pretty cool landform, landform, some pretty cool mangroves. This island actually belongs to a different country, Winter, which is this uh, part of this country over here. Now, remember I said 
they might go to war with these countries, but first they have to finish up another war of their own. That is this a war with this country, Winter. Uh, Winter was doing some suspicious stuff, so Claytonia sent someone to spy on them, but they killed the spy, and that sort of ignited a conflict. And now Claytonia's uh, trying to invade Winter, but they have some really crazy cool technology, so it's hard, yada, yada, yada. Basically, Claytonia's occupied with invading Winter, but once they finish that, then they might seriously think about invading these two countries and the rest of the Navakeshan Confederation. So, this is a physical map, a biome map of Claytonia. So, the most important biome is the plateau, because their capital is literally inside the plateau, as we said. Aside from that, uh, on the river they have some bamboo forest, and that's like the best place to live, because nobody wants to live in a desert. Aside from that, most of their land is not great for living. It's mostly deserts and some badlands, some shrublands, dead fields, acacia, ma mangrove. So yeah, not, not the best place to live. So now here is a population map, and as you can see, the majority, the majority of the people live like right here on the coast, because, you know, people like water. Water is good. And these uh, sparsely populated regions, these little pockets of population, these are the mining settlements, which we'll talk about later. So since uh, a lot of the land is useless for farming, the only uh, thing it's used for is mining, so that's why there are still a lot of mining settlements. Now this is a linguistic, an ethno-linguistic map of Claytonia. So um, there are three languages spoken. There's Claytonian, which is spoken here, here, and here. There's uh, East Navakeshan, which is spoke, spoken in like the, the deserts. And there's Region, which is spoken in Regia. Now, Claytonian and East Navakeshan are both descended from Distant. Region is a super ancient language that's not descended from Distant. That region is its own thing. And they're like, yeah, we're going to join Claytonia, but we're not giving up our language. And, uh, yeah, so... East Navakeshan is just kind of the general um, language that evolved in this region from Distant, but since Claytonia recently took this over, it's estimated that the East Navakeshan language will go extinct within a generation. So, uh, yeah. Now let's get into some history. So all this used to be ruled by the Navakeshan Empire. Then when the Navakeshan Empire fell, they broke up into many sovereign states, and this one was called Clayton, technically, even though the city of Clayton wasn't located in the country of Clayton. The city of Clayton was located right here. Why was the city not even located in its corresponding country? I don't know. It's complicated. I think it had something to do with tax invasion, ta tax evasion in the Navica Empire. Whatever. But, uh, yeah. So... This city was mostly inhabited by villagers who had fled from uh, Jernaya when they were sort of kicked out. They traveled to here. And that's maybe where the whole rivalry between this region and this region started because the villagers were kicked out. And there weren't many natural resources here, but the villagers were thinking, hmm, we're villagers. What do we do best? And what they do best is trading. So they started... Uh, Claytonian banking system, where they would invest in local mines all over the area. So even though they didn't technically own these countries, they were still able to invest in the mines there. And they ended up, over many, many generations, making a lot of money that they stored in their vaults. And they would keep investing in these mines. They actually ended up having a monopoly on the mining industry. And yeah, they would just prop profit from all these poor miners. So yeah, the ethics of Claytonia's money gathering are questionable, but they ended up being very successful. And then once they got enough money, they were able to basically bribe other countries' governments to join them. So eventually, uh, Claytonia made an alliance with this uh, um, country, Tregon, and that started the whole empire. And then one by one, they rapidly started expanding with new countries joining them. And since Regia wasn't just like a poor puppet state, they actually had to convince Regia to join them. And that's when the conflict really started. And then this country joined them too. That wasn't a big deal. But yeah, so now Claytonia 
just like 10 years ago, it barely existed, and now it's a very powerful empire. So yeah, they might invade these countries soon, but first they have to finish fighting the war with Winter, because yeah, we already explained that. So, some top notable sites that you might want to visit include the actual city of Clayton. If you can get there, it's kind of hard because it's in the middle of a mountain. There's the Wall of Clayton, which sort of closes off the only gap in the mountain. There's this island. It, the reason I didn't put a label here is because everyone fights over what to call it. Some people call it Victory Island. Some people call it Conquest Island. But this island is important because this is where the treaty was signed. This is where the empire was born. Uh, this is the city of Charlotte. It's important because it's where the Deestan River meets the North Canal. And yes, yeah, so there's the Deestan River, there's the North Canal. There's the Blue Ice Rail. This is the fastest uh, transportation line in the world. It's even faster than a regular ice rail. It connects Claytonia to the city of Hanakwa to the east. There's the Cherbolini River. It's a river that branches off the Distan River, and it's not as economically important, but I think it's prettier. Uh, yeah, here's another picture of it. And there's the Bridge of Getrask. Tons of mining material, tons of gold, diamonds, and iron were transported over this flimsy bridge, going from the mines to Clayton. And yeah, here's another one of the mining villages. There's just a bunch of mining villages. Honestly... There's not that much to see in Claytonia, even though it's big. It's mostly, it's just like that one city and a bunch of mines. Okay, so now let's talk about Claytonia's relations with other countries. So their allies are probably Durlan and Kanaya. And obviously that means they're not very friendly with Ayapeta. And also, uh, they... So they have a very important trading system with these two countries. So uh, Durlan sells them weapons, and they pay for it from the gold that they're able to mine from Kanaya's nether portal. Kanaya lets them mine as much as they want in the nether. So yeah, they all sort of work as a team to crash the global economy by making the price of gold almost worthless. So, obviously, Jernaya and Toramon, as we discussed, they're not really friendly with Claytonia. I'm not going to go over that again. We already explained why. And, yeah, the whole thing with Winter, there's a war. But, yeah. So, although Claytonia does have allies, their best friends would probably have to be Hanakwa. Uh, these two love each other, and they trade with each other, and they, they're the ones that built that super-fast ice rail between each other and they have a lot of the same people groups and cultures. They just get each other. Uh, it also helps that Claytonia is at war with Winter, and Winter hates Hanakwa with a burning passion that nobody really understands. And Claytonia is uh, begging Hanakwa to try and invade Winter to help them out, but Hanakwa's more nice and they don't feel like it. But yeah, these two get along very well, and even though Claytonia does have other allies, Hanakwa is who they trust most. Now, if I've been covering Claytonia in kind of a negative light, it's only to cover up for what I've said about them in the past, in which uh, my friend Sandian Express actually got kind of mad at me for being too supportive of them. So I think it's only fair that I say why I kind of did support them in the past, and to an extent am still sympathetic in some ways. So we talked about the situation, what's going on with Regia, the, re the region that just joined them. So, um, f since forever, this region, wh whether you want to call it Jernaya or Navaket, whatever, has just dominated the whole region, and Regia was just sort of submitting to them and trying to get what they could from an alliance with them. But they were always very excluded. And Claytonia, say what you want about them, maybe they're kind of dramatic, they were kind of there for Regia when Regia was being excluded, and they gave Regia a ton of new possibilities. And as someone who's been socially excluded myself, I can kind of sympathize with that. So, um, now, there's a conspiracy theory that there are people in Regia who regret this decision and are waiting to get away from Claytonia as quickly as possible, but 
I think we'll just have to see what happens. So yeah, one thing everybody knows about Claytonia is that it's at the forefront of a ton of international drama, whether for better or for worse. Stay tuned. Durlan is coming up next.